All right, we are talking about the within subjects t test, which is you know it has different names: paired samples t test, dependent samples t test. But really, it's a you're comparing two means when you have a within subjects design. Well, what's that mean? That means your participant is in both conditions of your experiment where there's only two groups. So this is a within subjects design. You want to know if two means are different from each other or to state that differently, the mean difference is not zero. The null is that the population mean difference is 0, 0.000 forever. The effect size, Cohen's D's again. What the T tells you, same thing as last time, not much. The T statistic, unlike the R, doesn't tell you anything valuable. Um, and you can go back to my other video to see why. Now, what do your data look like? Well, it, it, I'm using the same data as the last video, so you can go compare. But we, all, we have participant A, who gave us a political aggression rating when they were made to feel anger and when they were made to feel happiness. So participant A's aggression rating when they were angry is in one column. Their other aggression rating when they were happy is in this column. All right, that's essentially how you do it. When you're looking at your data, you're like, wait, wait, is this a, is this a within subject variable? Well, if you have data from your participant for all your conditions in that variable, it is. In this case, we have data for participants in the anger condition. The data is their dependent variable on aggression. And we have data, their dependent variable on aggression for the participant in the happiness condition. If we look over here, we can see how I enter that into Jamovi, an ID variable, continuous um, dependent variable for aggression, aggression at anger, right? So I'm telling the I'm telling myself that this dependent variable is aggression when the participant is in the anger condition. You can add more words to make that make sense for you, but like I'm just doing it this way. Th this column is their aggression in the happiness condition. So we click t-test, we click paired samples, all right, and we expect anger in the aggression condition to be higher than anger in the happiness condition, so we put that in first, okay? I'm going to go ahead and do it the other way as well, just make this a little bit complicated for you to see. What I want to choose is my effect size, 95% confidence interval. I like descriptives and descriptive plots. My Wilcoxon rank sign test is my non-parametric test. So I'm running a parametric test making assumptions, non-parametric test not making assumptions. I am also looking at my effect size 95CI of effect size descriptives and descriptive plots. I'm going to go ahead and click that away so you can see what we found here. All right, so we ran two, two sort of, we ran two t-tests. These are the same t-tests. Okay, one I put anger in first where I expected it to be larger. One I put happiness in first, right? Well, if I expect anger to be larger, and that is what I found, right? Like those in the anger condition expressed more political aggression. You know, that's in line with my hypothesis. The sign on my effect size is positive for that comparison, negative for the other comparison. The only difference here is I switched the order in which the variables were entered. And you can see all it does is switch the signs. Remember, I want positive to be in line with my hypothesis, so I'm getting rid of that second comparison. That's all I did there, was I just wanted to show you, you got to check to make sure your sign is in line with your prediction. And in this case, the data are in line with my prediction. I know this stuff gets a little cramped up here, but this is my aggression for those in the anger condition, which is higher than my aggression for those in the happiness condition. So then I'm just like, okay, I have a significant effect. It goes away with the parametric result. And so I'm not going to trust this result. I'm going to say, ooh, I think this might be due to violating assumptions. Ultimately, we know it's because I'm running too small of the sample sizes for these demonstrations. But I don't, want, I don't want the data to get too complex so that you don't know how to enter and get your result. But that's what I see here, okay? When the non-parametric result doesn't match the parametric, you don't trust the significance, okay? Nonetheless, our 95% confidence of Cohen's D suggests that this effect could be anywhere from a small effect to a large effect, all right? That I do trust. Um, 
to publish, if this were my data to publish it, I would have to run a larger sample size. But I do think I have something here. It's the same data as before. You can kind of see the differences. It's not, one's not better or worse, they're just different, okay? We got our means, our standard deviations, our standard errors. You're gonna need those for your graphs if you do this. And ultimately, this is our data. What do we care about? P-value, 95% confidence interval. We do check our non-parametric. In this case, our significant result could be due to a violation of assumptions. We need to rerun the study, but at my best estimate of the population effect size is between a small and large effect on the same side. So small effect, my hypothesis was correct. That's the positive sign. Large effect, my hypothesis was correct. That's my positive sign. You know that from the test. So I am just getting it in, getting it out. This is your within subjects t-test.